Hey y'all, welcome to step two of building out your Prius to live in. Now that we have the seats gutted out, if you haven't done that yet, check out my other YouTube video. Let's do some custom work. We're gonna go ahead today and I'm gonna show you how to build a custom platform with a lot of options to stop along the way. You can make it however you want. There's also gonna be options on how to make all this cubby space, side panels, even the painting and lining. I'm gonna tell you how to do it, what to do, what to use. So figure out how you want your car and let's get to work. Before we get started, there's a couple things I wanna address. First, under this bed over here, that's where your battery lives, your fan, all those things. So be very careful when you're drilling holes not to get into those, right? We want to preserve our batteries. Don't be drilling too many holes. Check that out first. And secondly, you do not need a complicated setup to live out of your car. You can check out some of my other videos on just a simple build out, even if you're just doing it for the weekend. Anyone can do this. So just hop right into it. Let's do it. <laughs> you ready? No time. All right, everybody. Here we are. Step two. Okay. So what we're going to do first is remove these panels and these panels because there's not really much underneath and it's just going to create more room. Anyone else, you can easily just line it, leave it how it is. First, in order to get these out, we're going to pop these panels out and then these little rain guard things. I'm just going to move them to the side. This right here, so you'll see all these little knobs. You're just going to pop them out here. Beautiful. Fresh manicure, y'all. Hey! -ya! If you make sounds, it's a lot easier. Oh! Yep. See? Told ya. So we're gonna start first with our 10 millimeter socket. Remember what I said about being in reverse. Oh yeah. All right, beautiful. One of these babies. And go ahead. So this panel right here is gonna take a 14. Now the one, there's one more way back here. What you'll wanna do is take a hand and go ahead and do that. I already did that and got it started because you're gonna to have to do the rest by hand. So we'll get that out there. A little longer, yes. Perfect. So now that we have all that out, as you can see, we have so much more room. We're gonna mess with these knives after we take out that side. Let's go. Wanna do that? So what we know now is that all the way across, 44 inches. So we're 44 inches across. Uh, you can take a two by four, go ahead and place it in there. So let's go do that. I'm really lucky that I have a badass cousin, so I can use power tools, but you can use a handsaw, whatever you need. I don't have my goggles, so we're gonna use a snorkel today. All right. We're ready to go. The next step, we got a couple things going on here. So we're gonna attach this two by four. All right, guys, so I am only drilling holes on the sides here and same on the other side. You just really wanna make sure you're not hitting any of your batteries, anything like that. So be careful with your self tappers. You only want them about an inch wider than the board that you're using. Is you're gonna pre-drill your holes. And that's really simple, really easy. And then you also wanna make sure you leave enough room for your platform and for the lip that this is this little flap that comes over. So that's where I placed mine. You got your platform, you got your lip. From there, we're gonna go ahead drill some holes. All right guys, so I just went for a dip, went for a little swim to work on some body contour. Now we're gonna work on some body contour for the Prius. All right, so I just took a nice little piece of foam, set it up as if it was gonna be the bed, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this little ruler, a little pen. So I'm just following along right here to make sure I get the right lines. And as you can see, this is going to be my cut for the uh, for the board that I use. You can easily just go flat and make it shorter. This is what I rigged together to trace, right? You can just follow lines like so. Very cool. So I used a roto zip, but honestly, you can just use any type of exacto blade and just go right on through, even it out. 
So I'm fast forwarding a little bit in the video to show you why. So next you're gonna measure from here to where the end of your seat is, right? That's gonna be the length of your platform. And this is why I'm custom cutting because I want it to come in like that, right? So it's up to you to choose. Otherwise, you just go straight across. Totally cool, but with the custom cut, so we're gonna need extra room on each end. Just follow the same steps on the other side and leave yourself extra room. Another reminder, you can literally just measure the 24 by 44, go to Home Depot or wherever you want and have them cut it for you. Also a great option. All right, so there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. If I didn't have access to all of my cousin's tools, thanks Nate, I would go ahead and just take a pencil and measure it out to 24 inches and just take a handsaw and go at it. So what I'll do is we'll measure 24 on each side, do the same thing on the other side, and then we're gonna draw a line across, throw the board there, and then that will be your guide. This is gonna make it so when I go across with this skill saw, it's gonna be at exactly 24 inches, and it's gonna be nice and smooth for when I throw it in the car. And now I'm just tracing along the wood, so that way we can cut it out perfectly. I have my handy dandy jigsaw. Again, you can just use flat boards. You don't need to be as specific as me. I just really like things how I like them. Remember that. Anyone who wants to date me. Look at that. Next thing we're gonna do is create the front of the box. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna have a big piece of wood so I have extra structure as the front. But what you can do is just take three pieces of wood and have one here, one in the center and one on the other side. That's what I see most people do um, and just turn into a cubby. But for the sake of structure and the build out I'm trying to do, we're going with a full piece of wood all the way across. So next I'm gonna measure from door to door. So the inside of that plastic piece, we're at about 52. Because after measuring to get that custom contour, remember what we did before, we can do the exact same thing here. Okay, so we did the length from door to door, the height from the lowest point of support to the top of your platform. Now the center where you're going to support to the top of your platform. We took that foam, we cut it out, so we create the contour, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut through with a jigsaw. We custom contoured you saw me just cut that out now something i am a little concerned about is these tubings so i'm just going to also custom cut out these tubes here get it on the other side option one bladed hole saw to get this other option jigsaw cool like a glove just leveling it here it's just about perfectly level my head will be a little higher but i'm not too picky next i just took this blade and cut off this part of the carpet. Reasoning is I'm going to line the entire inside and that carpet's just in the way. Drew some lines where we want to go ahead and throw our brackets to where we're going to put the wood. Perfect little muscle. Okay, so we bolted in our brackets, but I'm also bolting the carpet down. As you can see. All right, guys, so we have the top and we have the front. If you want to stop there, Stop there. You can leave it just these two panels, reinforce right where your brackets are, screw it in and you're good. Screw it in back here too. So that's the easy build. Throw your mattress on there. Even uh, what I found is that my cooler and things in front supported more of the front of the mattress, but this is just fine. If you want to sand, prep, paint, line all of your wood, check out my YouTube video on lining and painting and you can get that done. Fast forward, I'll show you how to bolt in the front and the top, and you're good. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep on going in this video with a custom build. Okay, so there's a lot of measurements that went into this, so I want to show you after the fact so you can understand why I did what I did. So I'm placing this in just like this. I measured across, I measured up, and then I even contoured the side. Just gonna go ahead trace those lines and you're good to throw it in on the other side. Measure 
to where that tubing is so you can make a cutout. Okay guys, so now I'm making these so they open up, right? So I want that at about 16 inches, which means that my headboards are also gonna be 16 inches and the mattress comes to here, so it'll be at about 10. So 10 by 16 boards for the headboard. Okay, so what I did here was I measured 16 by 10 and a half, and that's gonna be your head panels. So we have four panels cut out. We have our headrests and we have the side pieces. Now I lined and painted already. I don't recommend that. It's just gonna make your life a little harder. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm masking taping where I want my cuts. I do things so you don't have to, right? Don't do the painting and lining until you have all your pieces cut out. In other words, we're gonna cut out where our little cubbies are gonna be. So decide how much you want that to open up. I decided about 16 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do now and just start marking it. So at 16 inches, I am going to make my cut. So go ahead and start marking and you're gonna measure. Now for this, I'm gonna have this come straight across where this line is. So what I'll do is I'll take this measurement real quick. That exact line is at 17 and a quarter. So at 17 and a quarter, I'm gonna go straight across. Just for good measure, I'm also gonna make a line right in the center. Let me go ahead and show you. So I made these notches. Next thing I'm gonna do is just trace across those lines to cut. Same thing on the other side. Okay, awesome, so now we have all of our pieces. You can go ahead and assemble or take a couple days to do all your paint coats, the lining, etc. I really like a nice finish, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna sand them down, make them smooth, paint them, prime them, and do my lining. If you're not doing that, these pieces of wood are just fine too how they are, just wipe them off. But if you are gonna paint, Okay, so I'm at Home Depot picking out materials. Was gonna go with a rubber vinyl, but I'm actually deciding on this thin material here that's gonna go inside my box. So go to Home Depot, go shopping, figure out what you want. Guys, I did a whole different YouTube video for the painting and lining. Um, I went to an expert and had them teach me everything I need to know, and now I'm executing it. So you're gonna know exactly what to do from a professional so you can do it yourself and you don't have to pay someone to have perfect finish work. Since this is an optional step, I'm just gonna fast forward through it. Scott face. All right, everything's painted. We did our finish work. Now it's time for assembly. We're gonna start with the hinges. You're gonna get your top platform. We have two 17 inch hinges and they're going to be placed inside like so. We're gonna start screwing in our hinges before you finish all the screws. Make sure that it folds up correctly. All right, we got these on hinges, ready to go. The next step for me is gonna be lining the inside of my car. Now, we could also work on these front pieces. I'm gonna talk you through that real quick. So there's two options. We can connect these, put them on hinges as well and make it so they can come in and out nice and uniform and then figure out how we're gonna secure those. For me, it's really important to get to the coolers behind my seats and Honestly, they come high enough that I don't need this head support, but I'm gonna make it just in case to reinforce. So you can secure those to the front panel with L brackets. You can even get one of those cool, um, kind of like sliding drawer ideas. They hold up to hundred pounds. You could even cut a hole into that front panel and have that slide out and then have the hinged front piece come over, right? So those are all options. Try it out, see what's best for you. So before I do that, we're gonna get to the lining. 
It's also at this point in the process when you're gonna wanna think about if you wanna insulate between the metal and the lining. I originally was gonna use a spray foam, uh, but it's a huge pain in the butt. But if you want a pain in the butt, here's a picture of the one I would use. So I actually went with a little bit of an easier route, right? Um, this is also gonna make it so I can take everything out of my car if I ever wanna resell it. Probably won't do that, but just in case. What I did was I wanted a rollout insulation, something like a Reflectix. You choose, you can go to the store and check it out. I bought a K-Wool blanket. Actually, welders use this, and it has maximum thermal protection. And it's really easy. I'm just placing it right down. So what I'll do, I filled up any bolts that needed to be re-put in. I went ahead and took this flex glue. It is a rubberized waterproof adhesive, and I just filled up any holes. You can see I did some over here, covered that up with a little bit of a towel. Then I took my K-Wool blanket, which is amazing for insulation. Now we'll put down a lining. I cut my lining down with a blade to make sure it all fit nice and secure, hugged the left side and the bottom since we'll have our panel and our top piece here. Next thing I did was just took a blade, cut the corner off here so it could fit underneath. I created these little notches so I could push the lining underneath. And, and I also am using contact adhesive just to get any corners that were falling down. So now I'm gonna start screwing everything in. First, I'm gonna take these screws and I'm gonna take them out and screw them into our lining. Got that baby screwed in. We're gonna do the same thing to the one on the other side. So for those two screws, we had a 10 millimeter socket. So I'm just gonna throw this in reverse, hold this down, and we're gonna switch it out to, where is that? So we're just gonna switch this out and put that forward. It's nice and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use drywall screws so I can put the lining into the wood here. We're gonna make sure this lining is nice and tight. And we're just gonna... Now we have our lining down. I'm literally just securing it right now with these two screws and the drywall screws to the right. Now I took my front plate and I placed it really close to our L bracket. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Tucked everything underneath really tight as much as we could. So we're gonna go ahead and screw these in. You're gonna take your short screws, make sure the head is larger than that hole. Take the other side, really hold that in. Make sure you're going straight. Screw that in. Same thing on the other side, simple as cake. I'm gonna be using trim screws to go ahead and screw in the side panel to the front panel. So we're just gonna come straight from the side here. place our other side exactly where we want it and we're gonna do the exact same thing as the other side trim screws one two three or a few more if you want okay so on our platform I realized I need extra support right here for when the door opens so I'm taking a metal bracket because this is what I have and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and use that Now I'm just going to sand them down because I don't want them to snag on anything. Pre-drill right through here into the wood and then secure it down with these babies. Okay, so we're drilling in our screws. One thing that's really important is that you're going to put pressure down and also hold the other side so the metal's not moving around when you put in your first screw. All right, a closer look. And now we have full support. Platform's ready to go. We're gonna place that on top here and we're gonna start screwing it in. First thing we're gonna do is take our trim screws and I am gonna go ahead and put that all around that center here. Make sure you're not screwing in your cubbies, right? Just in the center. Put on some pressure. So if you have the lining, I'm just taking it right past there so the, the lining goes right over it. And we're just gonna put them all in. Every couple inches. Beautiful. 
front is secured, let's secure the back. You want to make sure your screws are long enough. It secures the two by four that we first put in. I'm going to take one and a half inch drywall screws. Let me change my attachment here. If I can find my attachment. There it is. Go ahead and throw that on. And we are going to use the drywall screws all along the front. And with a good amount of pressure, let's secure the back here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some L brackets. Right, so place them where you want it. I'm going to place mine right here. And I'm going to start with my first hole on the side. Make sure you press a ton of pressure in. Make sure you don't strip your screws. I'm going to lift this up and hold this in. Nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Guess what? With these L brackets installed, we're all done. Look how good it looks. I'm gonna leave it just like this because I have two really big coolers that I put behind my seats that is gonna support my mattress. But if you need to do your next step, what I would do is put L brackets right here and place them like so. You can even put this on a hinge so it opens and closes. My cooler will support my mattress perfectly and I can just use this as an exact board. Look how good this looks. Oh, can't wait to use it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, watch, share with your friends. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Sophie, what are we gonna do next? Well, we're gonna take some time to relax and have fun because what's life about?